Welcome to A Guide to Every Deck in Modern. Today we're looking at Lantern Control. Lantern Control is a bit of a misnomer as it's actually a prison deck and rounds out the dreaded third prong of Modern's complexity triad. Lantern seeks to limit which cards the opponent has access to using the combination of Lantern of Insight and various mill rocks, namely Codex Shredder, Ghoul Caller's Bell, and Pixis of Pandemonium, to strategically mill over relevant cards from the top of their deck. Lantern was originally created by pro player Zach Elsick in collaboration with the Magic community and has the distinction of being a completely unique deck unlike any other. The deck's game plan is to use discard spells to disrupt the opponent's early game, assemble a soft lock of Lantern plus at least three mill rocks, and turtle up behind Ensnaring Bridge. Inquisition of Kozilek and Thoughtseize disrupt the opponent's early turns while giving you information so you can better assess what to mill over. Ancient Stirrings, Inventor's Fair, and Urza's Saga help you find the specific pieces you need. Assuming you can assemble the pieces quickly enough, the deck eventually wins by milling out the opponent. Lantern ensures that it itself never mills out via Academy Ruins. It can also win with a backup plan of making Karnstruck tokens with Urza Saga, though this is far less likely. Outside of Ensnaring Bridge, the three main ways Lantern has of dealing with threats are by discarding them, milling them, or dealing with them once resolved with either removal or pithing needle. Time is a factor when playing this deck. Your route to victory is slowly milling your opponent one card at a time, intelligently considering the value of each one. You need to be able to play quickly to avoid drawing in time. In my opinion, Lantern is by far the most difficult deck to pilot in the game. I've been playing Magic for 12 years and no other deck I've played even approaches its difficulty. This is because not only do you need to know the deck inside and out, you also need to know every other deck in the format inside and out since you need to know what you can let your opponent keep, what to mill, what to name with Pithing Needle, and so on. You need to dump your hand on the table in a hurry to get Ensnaring Ridge online and often have to play Pithing Needle in the blind. You need to determine exactly what deck your opponent is playing from as early as turn 1 from something as simple as their first land drop. Once you assemble Bridge and Lantern plus 3 mill rocks, the game is basically over since you have 6 mills between your opponent's turn and yours to get rid of any relevant cards. The most difficult part is before that when you only have 1 or 2 mill rocks and can't reliably hit every threat. Sideboarding involves trimming cards useless in the matchup such as Prismatic Ending against Belcher or Pithing Needle against decks with no cards to name, and bringing in appropriate hate pieces or answers to hate pieces. Remember that cards like Leyline of Sanctity are useful in countering multiple cards, meaning there will be fewer things you need to mill. Postboard games become significantly more challenging once the opponent undoubtedly brings in multiple artifact hate cards. Therefore, you need to lean heavily on your discard spells in postboard games. Lantern is at its best against linear decks where very few cards are relevant and slower decks that give it time to assemble its lock, as well as decks ill-equipped to beat Ensnaring Bridge or which have a lot of dead creature removal. Lantern is at its worst against interactive decks with a high density of must-answer threats such as Blue-White Control, Elementals, Jund, and Tron, and fast decks that go underneath its lock like Burn. The deck also struggles to beat sideboard hate cards like Chalice of the Void and cards that hate on artifacts such as Stony Silence and Karn the Great Creator. Blood Moon can be a problem since it blows away Urza's Saga and can potentially strand colored cards in your hand which count against Ensnaring Bridge. The deck has become significantly worse since its inception due to the banning of Mox Opal and the printing of many new cards able to interact with artifacts such as Prismatic Ending, Force of Vigor, and March of Otherworldly Light. However, the core package is still a powerful one and Urza's Saga helps with consistency. Tips and Tricks you need at least 3 mill rocks to establish a lock. The amount of cards you can mill is equal to twice the number of mill rocks since you can activate them on the opponent's turn, untap, and mill again on yours. 1 mill rock is mediocre, 2 is ok to good, and 3 is virtually unbeatable since the opponent would have to hit 7 relevant cards in a row on top of their deck. One of the hardest points in the game is when you have lantern and just 1 mill rock. It's usually correct to prioritize milling yourself to find more mill rocks and other answers rather than attacking the opponent's draws. In the case of Ghoul Caller's Bell and Pixis, you'll have to weigh the pros and cons between denying the opponent's draw and your own. Some cases will be easy, others very difficult. If you have Codex Shredder but not Lantern, it's usually correct to mill yourself in the blind. Codex Shredder can rebuy cards later in the game that Academy Ruins can't. Don't do this if the opponent is running cards that benefit from your own graveyard like Surgical Extraction, Drown in the Lock, or Tarmogoyf. Don't mill opponents in the blind. There are too many cards that interact with or from graveyards. Only do so if you are 100% certain they have no cards like that. Academy Ruins prevents you from milling out and continuously rebuys artifacts. Late in the game, you can loop Codex Dredder over and over to repeat specific effects such as Beseju. Be wary of cards that draw cards or manipulate the opponent's top cards such as Fetchlands. There are also ways for your opponent to draw through the lock. For example, Chromatic Sphere is a mana ability and can't be responded to. 
Never sideboard out all your ensnaring bridges even against creatureless decks like Belcher. Always keep at least one copy. You never know what random creature they may bring in from their sideboard. Pithing Needle can name cards that aren't in play such as Beseju and Street Wraith. Because the deck relies so heavily on Ensnaring Bridge, you can't play any cards that you can't actively cast to empty your hand, such as Counterspells. Be wary of effects that bounce permanence to your hand or cause you to draw. Creatures with zero power can attack through Ensnaring Bridge and then gain power after the attack is declared. For example, the Exalted Trigger from Noble Hierarch or Ornithopter in Hammer Time equipped at instant speed. Pixis of Pandemonium can deal with cards you might otherwise not want to mill, such as Ancient Grudge or Eldrazi Titans. In the extremely rare case where you want to bring permanence back with Pixis' second ability, keep in mind that everything re-enters simultaneously and that each Pixis' card pile is separate. You can strategically put all the opponent's best threats under one Pixis and leave the other for safe cards. Urza's Saga can find all the deck's lock pieces except Ensnaring Bridge. It should be played before other lands, prioritizing the search effect over making tokens. You can target yourself with Inquisition and Thoughtseize if you desperately need to dump your hand for Ensnaring Bridge against aggressive creatures. Similarly, you can cast Prismatic Ending targeting something that costs more than you've paid for just to get it out of your hand. If you're missing it, Mishra's Bobble can act as a poor man's lantern for a turn. If you have lantern and need to dig for Bridge with Ancient Stirrings, you should mill over as many of your own cards as possible to dig for it before casting Stirrings. Lantern can be sacrificed to shuffle the opponent's deck to deny them a card or your own to find something better, although this is a last resort. So you may be looking at how much time's remaining and wondering what else there is. We've already gone through how the deck works, sideboarding, weaknesses, and tips and tricks. Lantern is unique in that it's vital to know exactly what to do against various matchups. I will now go through every single matchup in the format as quickly as I can to explain Lantern's specific game plan against them and which cards matter for each. 8 Rack other than quick starts where they shred our hand, this matchup is easy. All their rack effects can be easily dealt with via Prismatic Ending, and then we only have to needle Liliana. Ad Nauseam. Easy matchup, we only have to mill very specific cards and can make them discard anything else. They barely have any pressure via Oracle attacking for one and a few answers in their main deck and sideboard. Affinity. We only have to worry about super fast starts from them, but as long as we can get Bridge down, we're mostly safe. After Bridge, we just need to needle Cranial Plating so they can't equip it to Ornithopter at instant speed. Amulet Titan. Ensnaring Bridge deals with everything, and then we only have to worry about Valakut and Beseju. We therefore need to mill all copies of Dry to the Elysian Grove and Summoner's Pact. However, our Boreal Grazer can still attack and be pumped via Slayer Stronghold. Postboard gets much worse when they bring in additional Besejus, Force of Vigor, EE, etc. Leyline and Torpor Orb fight Titan and Valakut. Asmo Food. Depends on the version, but generally we have to worry about needling Time Sieve and stopping Academy Manufacturer's clue tokens from drawing cards. They can have random artifacts that can be a problem such as their own needle and sideboard cards like Shenanigans. Assault Loam. Bridge handles all their creatures and Needle Seismic Assault, then Prismatic Ending any Ren and Sixes that resolve. Postboard Leyline also stops Assault. Bant Spirits The two main cards to worry about are Skyclave Apparition and Spellcrawler, which become more problematic as they're protected by Kira, Drug Skull, Captain, Rattle Chains, or Instant Speeding Skyclave out via Aether Vial and Coco. However, if you can protect Bridge from Skyclave, they can't win. Red Green Belcher The only thing that matters is discarding, needling, or milling Belcher, and then dealing with Pyromancer Ascension. Do any of those things and they can't win. Leyline also stops Belcher. Blue White Belcher Harder than normal Belcher since you also have to worry about Teferi, Force of Negation, and Oracle plus Selective Memory. Lean heavily on the discard and mill plans and needle Teferi. Boggles. Incredibly easy matchup since Bridge completely stops them and they barely have any answers for it as sometimes literally zero main. Burn. A very difficult matchup since they're fast, Eidolon is extremely problematic, and all their burn spells are still alive after you get Bridge. Leyline helps significantly in this matchup, but they also bring in Smash to Smithereens and Rolling Vortex. Spellskite protects your Bridge and your face, and Kaya gains life. You also want to bring in Nature's Claim since it answers Eidolon and Vortex and can also gain you life. Calibrated Blast. This matchup is surprisingly difficult. You need to stop Calibrated Blast, obviously, but notably, you can't discard or mill it without Pixis since it has Flashback, North Rose of Chaos since it has Retrace. Bridge is still needed for Sign of Draco, Mishra's Factory, Shadow of Mortality, and Sokens on Tokens. Other potentially problematic cards are Briseju, Odawara, and Ramanop Ruins. Things get even worse post-board when they bring in Crime and Punishment. The only route to victory is discarding Blast and then finding Pixis as fast as possible to keep them off more. Copycat. Bridge answers all their creatures and stops the combo, but we still need to deal with anything that can get rid of Bridge like Teferi and Prismatic Ending. Crashing Footfalls Rhino tokens pose no threat under Ensnaring Bridge, meaning you're primarily worried about stopping anything that deals with it, which include Brazen Borrower, Force of Negation, Prismari Command, Odawara, and Beseju. Odawara and Beseju can be needled, but the rest have to be discarded or milled. Four sideboard Force of Vigor are also a problem. Death and Taxes which stacks effects they run matters, the worst being Thalia on the play. Bridge can be removed in many ways, including White Exile cards, Beseju, Skyclave Apparition, and Flicker was temporarily blinking it. Noble Hierarch can also attack through Bridge. Be especially wary of Collect Roof or Stony Silence postboard. Death Shadow. 
They're fast and have a lot of disruption, including discard and counter spells. However, if you can land a bridge, usually the only answer they have is Culligan's Command. Devoted Druid. Your number one target is Devoted Druid, which you can needle since it stops the untap ability. Also look out for chip damage via Exalted Triggers, Viridian Longbow, or Walking Ballista. Dice Factory. Very problematic since they main deck card in the Great Creator, and you also have to worry about quick combos. Needle has tons of choices, but the best are probably Core Tapper and Karn. This matchup is won via Discard and Mill, not Bridge, though again you still do need it. Domain Zoo. Their deck is all in on aggro, so we need to find Bridge as fast as possible. After that, we need to worry about getting burned out, killed by Exalted Creatures, and needling Ren and Six. Leyline of Sanctity is very important in this matchup. Dredge. By definition, you can't keep them from hitting the cards they're looking for since everything is milled anyway. What you can do is keep them from their explosive starts by discarding Cathartic Reunion or Thrilling Discovery and then set up behind Ensnaring Bridge, though you can still take damage from Creeping Chill and Conflagrate. Pixis is at a premium here. You also need to be wary of otherworldly gaze manipulating the top card. This is where your sideward Graveyard Hate will come in handy, particularly Grafdigger's Cage since they board an Ancient Grudge. Eldrazi Tron. They're not as fast as normal Tron and you can bridge their big Eldrazi creatures. However, you still need to worry about Karn the Great Creator, Ballista, Blast Zone, Besage you, etc. And they get Chalice of the Void, which is really bad for you. Elementals and 4-color blink. Their deck is overflowing with value cards and answers to everything in our deck. Prismatic Ending, Counterspell, Teferi, Expressive Iteration, even Ragavan exiles important cards. Answers and threats to worry about are White Exile, Teferi, Besage you, and Run in Six. You also need to stop all their cards that draw more cards, particularly Risen Reef. Discard their answers, assemble the mill lock as fast as possible, turtle behind bridge, and needle every planeswalker. Elves. All their attackers are stopped by Bridge. You just need to worry about drain effects from Shaman of the Pack and Grist, as well as anything that kills Bridge like Besaju. However, if they run the Devoted Druid combo, they can attack through Bridge with Druid, then generate infinite mana and infinitely overrun with Azuri, but you can needle Druid or Azuri. Enchantress. It's difficult to reasonably stop them from drawing since they have so many effects that do that. Sterling Grove protects their enchantments as well as top deck tutors. Solitary Confinement shuts off Codex Shredder. Also keep in mind that they're usually min decking Blood Moon. However, they have limited answers to your cards and are usually quite slow. Gift Storm. Ensnaring Bridge is ineffective in this matchup. Instead, you want Graveyard Hate. Primarily, you're looking to discard and mill anything that draws, especially Gifts Ungiven, and use Pixis to exile Past in Flames. Leyland of Sanctity is not an out to Grape Shot since they can just grab an answer for it during their Storm turn, but it does stop Gifts Ungiven. Glimpse Combo Ensnaring Bridge stops most of their threats, but not Planeswalkers or Omnath Triggers. You still want to try and prevent them from cascading if possible. Goblins you can needle Conspicuous Snoop and then turtle up behind Bridge. However, you also need to needle or otherwise eliminate Slinging Lieutenant and Pashlik Bond since they can similarly turtle up and amass goblins until a critical turn. They can also bring in Chalice of the Void. Not that you'd cut your Prismatic Endings, but you will need to choose priority between dealing with hate cards or Snoop. Be especially wary of Goblin Trash Master. Grinding Breach You can needle Grinding Station to shut off their combo and then turtle behind Bridge, although they can be quick with cheap creatures. Milling them also potentially poses a problem since they can recast anything in the graveyard with Underworld Breach, so you'll need to deal with that. Hammer Time Ensnaring Bridge would be foolproof, except they can flash Hammer onto an Ornithopter with Sigarda's aid. However, aside from that, they have no way to attack you. Usually, the only answers they have to you main board are maybe Spell Pierce, with a few more answers like Prismatic Ending or March coming in from the sideboard. Harden Scales The main thing to worry about is a lethal Walking Ballista or Creature Pumped via Arcbound Ravager. Needle either one or both to stay safe. Spellskite messes with all modular triggers by redirecting them to itself. Heliod Combo as long as you need a walking ballista, and Snaring Bridge will protect you from everything else. This changes, however, if they run Noble Hierarch or Birds of Paradise. Hierarch gets exalted, and birds can attack, and then they can execute the Ooze plus Mentor combo to grow it infinitely in combat. You also have to worry about Skyclave Apparition and Besage you. Hollow One. Bridge protects you from everything in their deck, and they usually have no answer to it main, with only a few in the sideboard. The only card to needle main is Insolent Neonate. Humans. Can be tricky if they land in early Thalia. Meddling Mage, Deputy Detention, or Skyclave Apparition can all remove Bridge, and Hierarch can exalt through it. However, your curve is lower than theirs, allowing you to preemptively discard their spells, and you can probably deal with creatures via Prismatic Ending. Also be aware of Imperial Recruiter. Indomitable Creativity Like Elementals, there are a lot of answers, draw effects, and Planeswalkers to worry about. If they have Sarah's Emissary, they can name Artifact and shut off Codex Shredder, but not the other Mill Rocks. If they play Primeval Titan, we need to deal with Valka and bring in Leyline or Torpor Orb to counteract. Archon of Cruelty can probably be ignored, though, and Leyline stops its trigger. Infect this matchup entirely revolves around getting Bridge out as fast as possible, and they usually have no main board answer for it, although they do have more Exalting Hierarchs than any other deck. They get a lot more answers post-board, but that they lose their game plan, giving you more time. The main thing to needle is Ink Moth Nexus. Jeskai Ascendancy This is extremely tough since they have about a million ways of drawing more cards. Still, do the best you can to discard Mill Ascendancy and Glittering Wish. They have a random smattering of other cards that matter, but the primary threat is Ascendancy. Jeskai Lotus Field very tough since they run many marches and endings, Cryptic Command to bounce bridge, and have Valakut Awakening, Memory Deluge, and Big Teferi to draw. Main deck Blood Sun also kills Urza Saga. However, they're slow to set up, potentially giving you enough time to establish the mill lock. Boomer Jund and Jund Saga. Another difficult matchup. They have early discard spells along with multiple spells that destroy bridge. However, it's nowhere near as bad as the light control decks. Primary needle targets are Viseju, Ren and Six, and Liliana. The Urza Saga variants don't play out much differently. Jund Sack. You have to needle Goblin Bombardment and Gris since they can just kill you through a bridge lock. Also, Ignoble Hierarch attacks through bridge. Things get scary postboard when they bring in Collector Roof, among other hate cards. Kirin Combo 
Similar to DNT, they have fewer stacks pieces to worry about, but you have to worry about the Kirin combo blowing up not just your lands, but also your one mana mill rocks or bridge. Lantern, the mirror match. This match is a race to see who can get the mill lock first. Similar to how Urborg functions in Mono Black Coffer's mirrors, Lantern is a detriment unless you have more mill rocks than they do. You're likely better off cutting all but one of them and focusing on siding in answers and additional threats. Bridge is still necessary to handle Saga tokens. Keep in mind that anything you needle of theirs also hits your own cards. Living End. Grief and Force Negation are their primary main deck answers to Bridge. Post board, they gain a lot of Force of Vigors and Foundation Rakers. Note that Graftigger's Cage does not stop Living End. Magda Changelings. Stopping the primary combo is your priority. Then you just have to worry about Mask Vandal hitting Bridge and Grist's ultimate. Bithing Needle should name Magda or Pyro Heroes first, then Grist. If you're not empty handed, Mirror Entity can slip all their creatures past Bridge and then pump them before damage. Martyr Proc and Soul Sisters. Their life gain game plan is completely irrelevant. The only cards you likely need to worry about are Walking Ballista, White Exile cards if they run them, and Stony Silence from the sideboard. Merfolk. Outside of losing to a fast aggro start, the only cards that remove Bridge are Force of Negation and Odawara. Mill. Prismatic Ending is very important to deal with the Crabs. Bridge is actually useless, although keep one in just in case. Academy Ruins is your best bet for surviving Mill, but it can still be countered by Surgical Extraction and other instant speed effects like it, or destroyed by Field of Ruin. Make sure to activate it on the opponent's end step so that if they respond, you can still use it again on your own turn. The biggest card to watch out for is Tasha's Hideous Laughter, which can single-handedly kill you since the entire mana value of your deck is only 42, including Bridge, and you can lose many important cards to exile. Mono Black Coffers. Early discard spells in Karn are a problem, but a lot of the removal is dead against you. The Mill Lock is far more important than Bridge, although you still need Bridge for their big threats. Being mono black, they have very few cards to deal with your Mill Rocks, with Karn being the biggest problem. This matchup changes if they're running the Reanimator variant, in which case you need Graftigger's Cage into prioritize getting Bridge down faster. Mono Red Prison. The two biggest threats are Karn and Chalice of the Void, with Chandra coming in third. Prismatic Ending is at a premium since it handles all three. Thankfully, they're slow to win, giving you time to find the Mill Lock. Merc Tide. They have some disruption in Spell Pierce and Counterspell, and maybe Archmage's Charm. Discard spells clear the way for Bridge, and they have few sideboard cards for it. However, they do have ways to manipulate their top card and draw, including DRC, Ledger Shredder, Consider, and Expressive Iteration. It'll be tough to keep them from finding an answer. Note that Archmage's Charm can steal your Mill Rocks or Lantern. Neobrand. They can kill you faster than you can set up. The main things you need are discard spells and to put Needle and Gristlebrand. If you do stop them early, they have few ways to recover. Oops, all spells. This matchup is primarily about needling Charbelcher and Undercity Informer, though they can still win with Balistrid Spy. Grafter's Cage shuts off their win conditions. They have few ways to interact with you, so the matchup is a race. Ponza. Like Red Prison, the main cards to worry about are Karn and Chandra. Prismatic Ending is good for shutting off their fast starts with Utopia Sprawl and Arbor Elf, but you also need to worry about longer games with Ren and Six and Peseju. The deck sometimes runs Pillage, which can destroy both lands and artifacts. Prowess. Get Bridge Online as fast as possible. Once you do, you're good and only have to worry about a few sideboard cards, although blue versions will usually have more card draw such as Expressive Iteration. Note that if you have Bridge and one card in hand, they can still attack with their prowess creatures and pump them multiple times with instants. Rakdos Midrange and Rakdos Scam. Plays out very similarly to the Death Shadow matchup except they lack access to blue. They've got Discard Effects, Colligan's Command, and Grief in the Scam versions. Milling yourself, for example, with Ghoulcaller's Bell becomes a no-go if they have Dothy Voidwalker. Reanimator. You obviously want to discard mill over their reanimation spells, however, Archon's Trigger isn't so bad if you have Bridge. More important are answers to Bridge, like Prismatic Ending and Teferi. Faithful Mending and Tainted Indulgence are notable as instant speed ways for them to draw cards and can be flashbacks. Needle should name Teferi. Red Eldrazi. The main card to worry about is Chalice of the Void, but aside from that, Bridge takes care of everything else. Safi Rally or Combo. There are a lot of needle choices, but the main one you need to worry about is Safi herself. Then, Bridge protects you from everything else, although there may be random tutorable creatures that can remove it. Scape Shift. Similar to Amulet Titan, except they're slower. Discard or Mill deals with the card Scape Shift. This is one of the few matchups where blindly milling them is advantageous since you can mill over Valakut or enough mounds to diminish their effect. Shamans. Their primary game plan is attacking you, which Bridge prevents. As usual, there are a few ways past Bridge though, including Exalted Ignoble Hierarchs, Besaju, and Bolt. Slivers. You're looking to race their aggro plan with Bridge and then only have to worry about Necrotic and Harmonic Sliver blowing it up. Song of Creation Storm. The only card that matters is Song of Creation, discard or mill it, and Glittering Wish. They do have an offer you can't refuse in Pact Navigation to help it resolve, at which point you probably just lose. As per usual, Bridge is still necessary since they play some creatures like Endurance. Leyline can block Grape Shot and Gutshot from targeting you, but they can still have ways around it and Bridge, including the Channel Lance, which you can needle. Sunforger combo slash Boros Stoneblade. Bridge handles all their threats, and then you just have to worry about March of Otherworldly Light and Prismatic Ending. Needle Sunforger if it's that version. Postboard gets worse as usual. Tameshi Bloom. You can needle Tameshi and then focus on beating whatever answers they have to bridge, which are primarily Teferi, Odawara, and Beseju. Newer versions of the deck incorporate Valakut and Dryday the Elysian Grove, so you'll need Prismatic Ending. Teamer Wreck. Counter spells are the main interaction here, with Archmage's Charm able to steal your Mill Rocks or Lantern. However, they're slow to set up, giving you time for the Mill Lock. Mono Blue Tron. Many cards pose an issue, including Karn, Repeal, and Cyclonic Rift. They can also draw multiple cards at instant speed with Thirst for Knowledge. Your needles will be stretched to the max. Thankfully, they're slower than normal Tron, giving you more time to set up the Mill Lock. Mono Green Tron. 
fast and with a ton of single card game winning threats, draw spells, and Karn's stony silence effect, this matchup is very tough. You need to use early discard to stop their setup and race for the mill lock. Every planeswalker in their deck, Ballista and Oblivion Stone need to be needled. Don't bother needling baby Karn since you lose the game anyway if they have it. Try to discard or mill it and use prismatic ending if it resolves. Note that you can't needle Sphere or Star since they're mana abilities. Twiddle Storm. This is just a race between the Mill Lock and their Storm turn. Needle's primary target is Wishclaw Talisman. Also, Spellskite can redirect the untap effects from Lotus Field to itself. Blue Black Inverter. You not only have to worry about counter spells, but also their combo. This card is at a premium to stop Inverter from coming down. Bridge has limited use, but is still necessary. Sideboard Torpor Orb completely shuts down their combo. Urza Thopter Combo. The builds vary, but they're generally a slower mid-range deck. Needle should name Thopter Foundry, not Urza, since his is a mana ability. However, Bridge also stops the infinite Thopter army, and Needle does work on Urza's free cast ability. If you assemble a lock, they can still answer it with cards like Portable Hole. They may also run Goblin Engineer or War of Invention to tutor it. Blue White Control Probably your worst matchup. Almost every card in their deck either draws cards or is an answer to your permanence, and they can sideboard Stony Silence. Your only course of action is to race to the mill lock ASAP and hope you have enough discard spells to counter their answers. Vivian Combo Needle on Vivian or Kikijiki shuts off their combo. The deck can be built in various ways, so I'd look out for additional combos that you need to needle, such as the Healy Rise Copycat. You may also have to deal with Karn the Great Creator. Yogmoth, A surprisingly good Game 1 matchup. They're relatively slow to set up, and you can needle Yogmoth and Grist. Graftigger's Cage is amazing since it stops their combo and shuts off all their creature tutors. Leyland of Sanctity blanks both Gerald's Messenger and Blood Artist. Their ways around Bridge, including Exalting Noble Hierarch and Main Deck Outland Liberator. Things get a lot tougher post board since they have many good cards against you, including Prime and Punishment or any Sweeper effect, Force of Vigor, and Necromentia to eliminate Bridge. And that's all she wrote. I hope you've enjoyed this look at Lantern. I want to thank my fellow players in the Magic community for whom sharing their experiences helps make these guides possible. You can find additional resources, such as an up-to-date deck list, in the description. If you think I left out anything important or got something wrong, please leave your thoughts in the comments.